HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have a preview of this spring's Hopkinton Hillers baseball team and we also have a preview of Hillers girls track. The Hopkinton Center for the Arts hosted opening night for the Hopkinton High School Honors Art Exhibition and we have the Bay Path Humane Society Pet of the Month. But first, the Board of Selectmen evaluated interim Hopkinton Fire Chief Stephen Slammon and reached a decision on his future as chief. In January, former chief retired. Um, board uh, conducted a, had conducted a hiring process to find to hire a new fire chief. At the end of the day, um, the, we came forth and we had um, a lot of sundry reasons. We had one candidate who we think very much of, but the board um, had some uh, conditions it wanted to. Um, achieve before uh, before going forward with a full-time appointment. The Board of Selectmen reviewed Fire Chief Stephen Slammon. Slammon has served as active Fire Chief since Chief Ken Clark retired at the end of 2015. I've, I felt like we've made real progress there. I, I honestly can say I feel that all the way around. My work at Town Hall has been great. My uh, experiences with the Board have been great. Um, I honestly, it's not that we haven't been without problems that we work on but I don't feel like there's been a hurdle that we haven't gotten through or over yet so I'm I'm pretty excited about that. Slammon was one of the final two candidates in the initial search process for a new fire chief then when the other candidate current Framingham chief Gary Darty dropped his candidacy just prior to a selectman meeting in December selectman decided to reopen the search process while appointing Slammon as interim chief Many residents disagreed with the decision and felt it was unfair to Slammon to not give him the position permanently. The board readdressed the fire chief position at the January 5th meeting and decided to appoint Slammon as fire chief until the final day in March and in the meantime decide if the search process should be reopened. At the April 5th meeting, selectmen expressed satisfaction with what they saw during Stephen Slammon's time as fire chief. First of all, I want to echo all the compliments that uh, that the other board members have given you. Uh, last few months have been um, impressive. Uh, I like to see your style. I like to see your accomplishments. It's awkward for us. We're all in the private sector. Sure. We manage people for a living. Um, and, and, and when you manage in the private sector, you go in and close a door and you have a conversation with the employee or the employer and it's not as awkward as this. There's a television camera there. I mean, I can see you on the TV over there when you're talking. The process in the public sector is awkward sure. by nature. We can't, we can't do much about that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you've done an excellent job in that awkward arena. And you've stayed focused as there was a lot of noise all around. Um, I actually got to see you and your team in action just a couple weeks ago at, at, at the pond. Um, and it was just, it was so methodical. It was, it was just watching the guys diagnose where the, where the issue was up in the ceiling, found it, and uh, controlled it. You know, they just, it was just amazing. And then you were out there coordinating it. It's um, fabulous. Uh, you know, and, nice. and the out-of-the-box thinking, as, as Mr. Mosher was talking about with the, with the fire trucks and, and everything, um, I'm, so, I'm so pleased with the, with the work you said. The communication, they're sending us out all those communications, fabulous. I'm, the board's had sort of this challenged relationship with the fire department, right? Everyone loves firemen, God knows we love firemen. But, but as, an, as an organization, it's just, you know, there's, there's been complexities, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think that was one of the major topics of our conversation sure. was the fact that we're looking to you to, to really take the lead, right? You know, sort of help the department evolve. Um, uh, 
you know, in all, in many dimensions, and 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 really, um, you know, be the guy who who leads it in a new way. And um, I will frankly say that I've watched you pretty closely, and we've caught up on things, you know, a few times along the way. And I do feel like you have fulfilled our expectations. I mean, in, in all regards, it's been very nice to see you in this job. Um, um, your ambition for it is is obvious, right? Your I think I think again that was never the, really the question. I think I think getting to know you has been a very valuable experience because again, we now know that ambition is matched with with capacity to do these things. You earn this job, Thanks. and for anybody to say anything else, uh, thinking that uh, you know we we felt pressured to give you the job or anything like that, is just not accurate and we wouldn't give you the job if we didn't think that you were fully sure. capable and, and now you've exhibited that. Uh, all right, now all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, that's unanimous. Congratulations on coming up. Congratulations to Fire Chief Stephen Slammon. For more on this story, check out our website, hcam.tv. Last year, the Hopkinton Center for the Arts put the finishing touches on their brand new edition, which includes a beautiful new art gallery. This past week, many Hopkinton High School students got their first look at the gallery, as well as some amazing artwork as the annual Hopkinton High School Honors Art Exhibit was on display for the opening night. The work of some of the best artists Hopkinton High School has to offer was put on display at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. The annual Honors Art Exhibit took place in the brand new HCA Art Gallery. Um, so this is the Honors Exhibition that takes place every year. And it's actually um, something that we use as one of the most authentic forms of assessment up at the high school. It's an opportunity for some of our upper level students um, to have the experience of um, installing a gallery show and promoting it, uh, arranging the works in the gallery, preparing for it. Um, so it's a pretty cool thing. It's, a, it's kind of nice for them to feel like what it's like to be an artist working in a community. We're really, really lucky to have such a great group of kids. Um, the kids who are here are very self-motivated and work really hard. Um, maybe, maybe they didn't all start out that way, but once they realized they loved art, they really worked very hard to get here. Um, coming up, whether it was through the studio art sequence or through photography, ceramics, digital art. Um, so to get to this point, most of them are pretty well-rounded um, and pretty well-versed well in a bunch of different mediums. Um, it's cool to see them sort of speak through their work, you know. Most of the work here is work that they've done in class as an assignment. Some of the work, um, historically there were a lot of AP students in the show because they get to, they, they have the opportunity of creating an entire body of work that explores a theme. Um, this year there are only three students represented and there, um, the other ten students in the show um, are not AP students. So all of it is stuff that has been made in class. Um, usually starting from some type of a prompt, whether it was focused on a technique or it was focused on a concept, and then the students worked concept, concept to materials or technique to concept. So. Um, it's a self-portrait, and I took two photos of myself and I photoshopped them, and then I painted it at summer camp at Rhode Island School of Design this summer. like ever since elementary school, um, so yeah, ever since I was little. I have um, three photographs that I did last semester, um, one from sophomore year. Uh, two of them I actually did in the smartphone photography course, which is like interesting because the iPhone makes really good pictures actually. Um, the other one is the one on the cover of the art show card, like the promotional photo. It's a, of a dollhouse, which was a series I did in sophomore year. So, yeah, it's just it's cool. Today at the art show, I have pieces from through my sophomore year to my senior year. Um, everything I've been working on from uh, basic techniques like slab rolling and simple mugs and stuff to like my more complex stuff with a lot of detailing which is like what I've really been getting into. 
which is uh, what I've really been getting into this year. So I'm really proud of my stuff from, from my most recent work. I know my dad's an artist on the side, so I started really young. And um, I just recently started ceramics seriously in high school, but I started with 2D art. So my work is ranging from my sophomore year to senior year. And it's, like she said, like from the basics to the more complicated. I like to focus on small like add-ons, like slip trailing and bands and stuff. So it's just kind of all over the place, like bases and pictures and everything. And then I started art seriously like my sophomore year when I got ceramics, which and ever since I've taken the class and I love it. But yeah. All right, uh, how do you feel like the new gallery here? I think it's beautiful, like especially compared to the other building. It's so modern and like it's it makes huge. it makes our work look more professional than it, it might be. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they're just blown away. It's, it's so exciting to see so many of their friends come and support them, I think more than ever before. Um, they seem to all really love the space and uh, did a great job hanging the show. One of my favorite shows here always. Really talented kids. The Hopkinton High School Honors Art Exhibit will be on display at the Center for the Arts in the Art Gallery until April 22nd. It is now time for the Baypath Humane Society Pet of the Month. This month I was introduced to a very nice cat named Xena. So Xena is about four and a half years old. Um, she was found outside as a stray with her kittens and she was put into a foster home with one of our staff members who took care of her kittens until they were old enough. They all have been adopted out, so Zena's the mom she's left. Um, she needs to be an only cat. She does not get along with other cats or dogs. Um, she definitely has a lot of catitude, so cat experience is a must for her. Um, but she's very affectionate and friendly once she's comfortable with you. She's fine with anyone who walks in the room. Um, being at the shelter is just a stressful place for most animals and an animal like her that doesn't like cats or dogs, it's double stressful. So um, really just a quiet adult only home, maybe some older teenagers, more adults only is what we're looking for, um, would be ideal for her. How old did you say she <laughs> She's about four and a half. We've had her now for two, almost two months here. So. That's quite a while for our cats. We usually, our turnover is like two weeks, so two months is a long time <laughs> for a cat to be here. So we're looking for the right home for her. Right now you can visit Xena at Bay Path Humane Society. Xena is available for adoption and looking for a loving home. Coming up next on HCAM News, we take a look at this year's Hillers baseball team and girls track and field team. Courtney will have our HCAM insider and we'll get you up to date with events coming up in Hopkinton. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology.
Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. Despite the crazy weather, Hiller's baseball is getting ready for the spring season. I recently caught up with fifth year head coach Jay Golden to talk about this year's team. After missing the postseason last year, Hiller's baseball is back to work in the Athletic Center getting ready for the 2016 season. And fifth year head coach Jay Golden is liking what he's seeing so far. Uh, so far, you know, the attitude, the approach, um, and, you know, everything since day one has been really good. Um, it's a solid group of kids, like really, you know, nice kids. They, they pull for each other. They support each other. And that's, you know, that's super important as far as building the culture with the team. You know, um, you know I think it's Greg Popovich, the Spurs coach, always talks about you know, the culture and how the, how the team interacts and treats each other is just as important as the talent level. And, you know, it, from what I can see, it looks like we got both uh, so far. And, you know, I hope that yeah, keeps up because it's been good. All right. Now, uh, taking a look at this team, uh, I know it's early on in practice, but what do you see as the, the, the strongest traits of this team? You seeing strong hitting, strong pitching, or all around the board a little bit? Um, I, I think that, you know, so far it looks like we're, you know, we're hopefully going to be strong in a lot of different areas. Um, you know, I think that we have a lot of athletic players that, um, that you know, we, we like to put a lot of pressure on the base paths and make it uncomfortable for other teams, you know, whether it's, you know, with the playing small ball, buntings, uh, hit and runs, delayed steals, things like that. And we have a lot of guys that can execute those things. Um, I, I feel like, um, you know, that's a, definitely a strength for us. Our infield defense has been phenomenal so far. Our two um, senior captains play in the middle, and they're really leading the way with that. Um, our pitchers look, look pretty solid so far. They threw pretty well in our first scrimmage. Um, we got a lot of guys, as you can see out here, competing for spots in the outfield. It's pretty wide open, but um, there's definitely some talented players there. Um, and, you know, the bats are coming along, too. We're getting a ton of swings in the cage. So, you know, so far, no complaints. You know, the kids are working hard, and that's all you can ask. All right, who are going to be the captains this season? Uh, we're very fortunate, very happy to have uh, Jack Vicari as a three-year starter. Um, he's going to be playing shortstop this year as, a, as one captain, and Kyle Halloran, who is our second baseman, is our other co-captain. Um, the two of them are, you know, they're very good friends. They have been since they were little. Um, they just kind of... They, they, they know where the other guy's going to be without even saying a word um, in the middle. And uh, they'll both hit at the top of the order for us. And they're very good leaders, too. Um, baseball means a lot to them. Um, the, you know, the other, other players respect them a great deal. They, they got you know, pretty much unanimous votes to be the captains, and it's, it's, it's deserving. So we're, we're glad to have them to lead the way. That was uh, one of the goals to get back into the tournament after uh, last Absolutely. season. Yeah, yeah, that's always our first goal is to try to make the state tournament because, you know, anytime that you can extend your season and get into bonus baseball, you know, that's always the first goal. Um, we've been fortunate here in years past to go on some pretty nice runs. Um, you know, we made it to the South Semis a few years ago, and, you know, once you start getting rolling in the tournament, you know, anything can happen, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, and uh, it's something that we, we certainly aspire to. You know, we've got guys who are going to work hard towards that goal, and we'll see how it plays out. All right, what's the upcoming schedule like uh, as far as practices and scrimmages? Um, well, we went to Algonquin on Saturday. They're a very, very good uh, high-level Division One team. Uh, we play them at the, uh, the Northboro Turf Fields. Um, yeah, I think it's the New England Baseball uh, Complex. Beautiful, beautiful place over there. So we played nine innings there last Saturday, and it was really good. Um, you know, we got a lot of good work in. We're going to Fino Field to play Milford tomorrow in a scrimmage, and we've got King Phillip coming here Friday uh, for another scrimmage. And then uh, next week, we open up a week from Friday against Dover Sherburn. So we'll work out on our own next week on our field Monday through Thursday. We'll look to have an inner squad game probably Tuesday to get another look at guys and another look at the pitchers. But, um, but yeah, so it's mapped out pretty well. Um, we'll see if this, this weather continues. Hopefully it does, but it's New England, so you never know. But, um, but yeah, so, so far, you know, it, it's played out pretty well, and we hope that continues. All right, Coach, well, we look forward to another great season at Hillers Baseball. All right, we love having you. Looking forward to seeing you at the field. Thanks, Tom. To stay up to date with the latest information on Hillers Baseball, be sure to check our Facebook page, Twitter feed, and website, hcam.tv. Speaking of spring sports, Hillers Girls Outdoor Track and Field is getting ready for the season. I recently caught up with the three captains as well as head coach Brian Hall. Hi, I'm Jackie. I'm a senior and I run 100-200 and 4x1 relay. Hi, I'm Taylor and I am wait, what? I'm, <laughs> I'm a junior and I run 100-200, 400, 4x4, 4x1. I'm Isabel and I run the 400, the 800, the mile, the 4x4 and the 4x8. Our team this year is looking really good. We have a lot of fast new freshmen, especially in the sprinters, so I think it'll be a really good season. 
mean, I just got here, but I think we're going to be really strong, and we have a couple new really good runners, sprinters, distance, so it should be a good year. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I agree with all that, and especially since we added like a lot of new throwers and jumpers, too. I think we'll be a lot stronger than winter. Um, we've been working on a lot of block starts and working on our handoffs to try to get anyone who's new to the sport into the system. And uh, we've also been working a lot on speed, doing like 200s, 100s, and time trials. Endurance. <laughs> yeah, uh, the distance girls have been doing definitely a lot of like longer runs. We don't usually do speed to like the end of the season or towards the end of the, the season more. So it's just like getting our mileage back to where it was. Um, I've been doing track since sophomore year. I started as a distance runner because my friends were doing it. And then I eventually became a sprinter because I got injured, did a couple sprints and realized I really liked that. So I started doing that. Um, I started track in seventh grade at middle school and my teachers made me do it because of gym. But uh, yeah, that's it. I started track also in seventh grade at middle school. And I think just because like my brothers did it and I knew Hockeyton had like a really strong program and it was something I wanted to be a part of. All right, coach. Um, first off, how long have you uh, been uh, coaching track and field here at Hopkinton High School? Uh, this will be my 10th year as uh, head coach and 11 years ago I assisted Mike Scanlon who is a longtime coach here. All right terrific now a uh, great season last year is uh, really this program is just fantastic here at Hopkinton High School. How's the team looking this year? The depth is just incredible. Um, we've had a few uh, more elite performers in certain events but I've never seen a team this deep in like every event. I don't see a weakness Right now we've got a lot of new uh, sprinters that look to make an impact and a couple new throwers and we've always got distance runners so we look pretty solid. All right, what are the uh, concentrations here in the opening weeks of practice? Not get hurt pretty much. Get them in shape for the, the rest of the year. Um, I love our schedule. We don't have any uh, real tough meets until May. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. Um, but so we can do it, do things the right way. Get strong early and not, you know, hold off on the speed work until May, because uh, you know the work we do now sets a foundation for a great May and then June for states and hopefully nationals. Now the weather's been a little bit crazy here, as it is New England, and always seems to be crazy. But uh, has that affected your practices at all? You know, it's just kind of like a return to indoor track. Then we're we're inside for much of the winter, so uh, the distance runners know they're going outside, and unless there's a hurricane. But, um, you know, we, we've got, we're fortunate to have the indoor track, so we, we'd make good use of that in the bad weather. Well, best of luck this season. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Great to see spring sports starting up. Hopefully the weather will cooperate just a little bit better. For the latest Hopkinton Hillers sports news and highlights, be sure to stay tuned to HCAM News, as well as our social media pages and website, HCAM.TV. With the Boston Marathon quickly approaching and many school programs taking place, you can expect a whole lot of programming coming up on the HCAM channels. Here is Courtney Taylor to tell you more with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, April 8th at 8 p.m., Paul Clarisi joins the Hopkinton Coffee Break hosts to share Boston Marathon stories and experiences. Dang. Pat, oh, Patty no. smacks right into the hind oh. quarter of the horse. Oh, oh no! So, no. Yeah, oh. she falls back, but runners sort of catch her before she falls. Yeah. And uh, Allison Rock just kind of like goes around and keeps going. Shit. Ends up winning, and Patty came in second for the oh, third year oh. in a row. Yeah. On Monday, April 11th at 7 p.m., women jazz composers are honored with performances of their songs on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Your smile gives me hope. When I am led astray All because of you On Physician Focus at 8.30 p.m., factors that lead to opioid and prescription drug abuse and what is being done to prevent it will be discussed. The pendulum swung so far towards uh, more aggressive treatment of pain that we began to see a push for the use of opioids in what's called chronic non-malignant pain. On A New Great Gardens at 9 p.m., Brian Scanlon demonstrates the process of installing a fire pit from beginning to end. It's important to remove all the organic material. 
get the grass out of there, any sod, any roots, things like that, because uh, those types of products uh, naturally attract water. On Tuesday, April 12th at 7 p.m., Ronak Hussein is celebrated for her many years of working at the library on a new HCAM News Focus. On Wednesday, April 13th at 7 p.m., members of the ESBC share the progress being made and how the project is staying in budget on a new ESBC update. We are now going to be, um, after a very successful meeting on Tuesday, we're going to be wrapping up the design development set and submitting it to the Mass School Building Authority in about two weeks. On Sunday, April 17th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from April 11th will air. HCAM has tons of programming, so if you want to know all about it, head to hcam.tv slash connect and sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to stay up to date with Hopkinton events, check out our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, hcam.tv, you can find the latest Hopkinton-related news, including details about many Boston Marathon happenings around Hopkinton. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and thank you for watching.